Jurors have just reached a verdict in the federal trial of R&B singer R. Kelly. He has been found guilty of racketeering. He is also charged with sex trafficking. These are charges that could send him to prison for decades. And CNN's Jean Casares has been following this case for us. We also have CNN legal analyst Ariba Martin. She is here with us also. Okay, Jean, this just happened. I know you are scrambling to figure out exactly what all of this means, as am I. So guilty on racketeering. And the Eastern District of New York, the courts just tweeted that out. So they are saying guilty of racketeering. There was one count of racketeering. There were 14 different acts involved, including sexual exploitation of a minor, bribery, kidnapping, and sex trafficking charges. So this is all we have at this point. Now, he's also charged with the Mann Act which is a federal law involving sex trafficking. Now, nothing on that yet, so they could be in the midst of the reading of this verdict because racketeering was count one. The man acts were the, the, oh, the counts after that, two through nine, and so we don't know how far they've gotten, but this is an extremely complicated trial. It is very, very sophisticated. It went for uh, 23 days. There were 50 witnesses. There were many young women that testified that R. Kelly had uh, kidnapped them, held them in rooms. They could only go to the bathroom or eat if he, they got permission from his people. They had to wear baggy clothes, they testified, unless they were in his presence. They could only look at him. They could not look at other men. It was tearful testimony, emotional mm -hmm. testimony, and ultimately the prosecution said it is time for him to be convicted. Mm. Ariva, uh, it's hard to imagine that he wouldn't be convicted of sex trafficking with all the vile details that we heard during the trial, those that Jean just laid out in terms of, you know, as we all know, the, the singer Aaliyah trying to marry her illegally, uh, you know, underage, all of the stuff that we heard. So uh, where are you with all the details that we've just heard? Not surprised, Allison, at all, at the uh, guilty verdict. And not only was there riveting testimony, as Jean just uh, told us about, but there was also video recordings, apparently some pretty graphic uh, video and audio recording that the jurors were allowed to both hear and see of him berating women, of him engaging in, in certain kinds of violent sexual acts with women. So the jurors had an opportunity to, to not just hear from these women, but to see these videotapes, to hear the audio. And this has been 25 years in the making, according to to the prosecution that he used his platform, he used his fame, his music uh, fame to lure young girls into his circle and then had a, a team of people around him, employees, agents, managers, others in his circle uh, to create this, uh, uh, you know, oppressive environment for these young women. Uh, so not surprising that guilty verdict on these very serious federal charges. And as you said, Allison, he is facing anywhere from 10 years to life. And this is only the beginning because there are other jurisdictions that also have filed charges against R. Kelly. Jean, um, we did hear a lot of details about the case, but not all of them. Was this case more shrouded in secrecy uh, in terms of transcripts and things because some of the women were minors at the time? Sexual assault victims. And that can create a situation where things are sealed. I want to talk about what Ariva just mentioned, extremely important, because the indictment and the testimony went onward from the sexual exploitation, sex trafficking, to the production of videos where these young women, many of them minors, were forced to do things before the camera. Now, right before the trial ended, we know that the jury was able to see some video. The media was not allowed to look at it at all. We don't know what it was, but it corroborated what these young women were saying. Well, today, the media was actually able to hear some of the audio. I've seen some of it in writing. It is not appropriate for air what these women were told to do, told to say back to R. Kelly, so they place R. Kelly in the room. And remember, this was a criminal enterprise. It involved R. Kelly, it involved handlers, managers, agents, people to the side of R. Kelly, but he was the head of it. And so he is the one that ha was charged. And so, Ariva, that brings in the racketeering. Uh, convictions. So that's usually uh, reserved for like organized crime. So how does this fit? 
Yeah, you're, you're right, Allison. Usually when we think of racketeering, we're thinking of mob bosses. We're thinking of the mafia. We're not thinking of sexual predators like R. Kelly. But the uh, federal prosecutors in this case wanted to and, and did an effective job of making the case that this just wasn't about one incident. It wasn't about multiple incidents. It was about a criminal enterprise that was carried out over years involving different states, involving different, uh, you know, actors, bad actors that were involved in this enterprise. And hopefully this is the beginning uh, of seeing these kinds of prosecutions that carry very serious penalties against sexual predators like R. Kelly. This is a huge uh, decision given the Me Too movement and particularly to see someone we've seen Bill Cosby, we've seen Harvey Weinstein, and now R. Kelly being held accountable for, uh, in this case, decades of sexual assault and violence against young girls and women. Gene, we are just getting in more information now that he has been convicted of nine counts, I believe, including the sex trafficking charges and that racketeering. So they, they're just announcing it, you know, slowly first was the racketeering and now the sex trafficking because it would have been unimaginable for him not to be given what you've just said was the evidence presented in mm -hmm. the court. And sex trafficking was a part of the racketeering also, but the Man Act specifically focuses in on sex trafficking as just you're saying right here. Um, you know, this jury was seven men and five women. Uh, it was a very diverse jury. It was a jury that listened to so much testimony, uh, woman after woman. There was a, here's one example, there was a former radio DJ intern who says that R. Kelly invited her to interview him. I mean, what a thing, right? When you're just an intern and, and he asks you, you can interview me. She went to his studio in Chicago. She said she was placed in a room. She realized she couldn't get out. And this was for days. She was finally given food. She remembers passing out and awaking and seeing R. Kelly readjusting his clothes. And so she believes that she was drugged, sexually assaulted, and that is one example. Um, how terrifying. I mean, that yes. is, that does uh, obviously conjure Bill Cosby accusations as well, um, at, as Ariva just brought up. Ariva, tell us again, now that we know that he's been convicted of these sex trafficking and racketeering, how much, he's 54 years old, I believe. How much time is he looking at in prison? Yeah, he's looking at a minimum of 10 years and a maximum of life in prison. And again, as I said, Allison, this is just in this one case. There are other jurisdictions that are also going to try him. I think it's also interesting to note, Allison, the defense in this case was primarily that these women were all liars that they were gold diggers, that they uh, purposely associated themselves with R. Kelly because they were trying to advance their music careers uh, and that they were voluntary participants in sexual acts. And, and I think at one point the lawyer even said, you know, it, it's not a crime to, to like kinky sex. You know, he made, kept making references to the fact that these were consenting uh, adults. And, and the jurors obviously rejected unequivocally rejected those uh, claims by his defense attorney and found that these were not consenting adults, that these were children, that these were violent acts, these were criminal acts, and they're holding R. Kelly accountable. Reva, one more question on that. It, because of the echoes of Bill Cosby, same thing, you know, the old he said, she said, no. She said, she said, she said, she said, she said, as we've learned. And, the, you know, the, the arguments that you're, that this was all consensual, it's, it's absurd. But isn't it interesting that this is the verdict now, because 13 years ago, R. Kelly was acquitted of child pornography charges at a state trial. So, you know, obviously there's been a sea change. A major sea change, uh, Allison, in the way that we listen to, the way that we believe, and the way that we receive claims that are made by women that have been sexually assaulted. And as you know, for many years, women that would come forward and tell of sexual violence were not believed. They were actually maligned uh, by their jobs, by their employers, and even in the media. Uh, but since that time, there, there's more understanding, there's more empathy, and there's a, a greater understanding that there are lots of reasons why women don't uh, always come forward right after they are sexually assaulted. We understand that better now. And the public, I think, by sending a strong message in this case, fed up, enough is enough. And men who engage in this kind of conduct are going to be held accountable, and that accountability is going to look like long prison sentences. So uh, not surprised by this verdict, and I, I don't think anyone that's been following this trial is surprised because the, the nature of the evidence presented by the prosecutor is so compelling.